It's very easy to get lost in revision and so it's worth checking in with yourself and your schedule. So one of the ways to get back on track or to help you start in the first place is to focus on one particular area. And in this video, we'll just focus on enzymes, a topic that comes up every single year. So start at the very beginning, the definition of an enzyme. It's a biological catalyst. So it's a protein. We know it's a protein catalyst and protein synthesis or proteins are made in ribosomes. What is the function of an enzyme? The function of the enzyme is to speed up biochemical reactions, ensuring that they happen fast enough to sustain life, to keep life going. And enzymes achieve this by lowering the activation energy. So we know that enzymes are proteins and because they are proteins, they have to contain the elements carbon, hydrogen, oxygen and always nitrogen, sometimes phosphorus and sulfur. So it's very important that you understand all of these key pieces of information. How do you know if something is an enzyme? Well, it's easy to recognise them by their name. They all end in ASE. So think of amylase, potato phosphorylase, lipase or proteases. Enzymes are proteins and proteins are all about shapes. They're folded into particular shapes. So an enzyme, its shape is very important to its function. Enzymes are folded into intricate three dimensional shapes described as globular. And if the shape is changed, well, then the enzyme cannot function. What is meant by enzyme specificity? Well, it's all in the name. Enzymes will catalyze only one type of reaction. And this is all down to the active site, this uniquely shaped active site on the surface of the enzyme. It will only bind with one specific type of molecule. This is the substrate. The substrate binds with the active site, forming this enzyme substrate complex. And this is key to the reaction proceeding. So if the substrate cannot bind with the active site, well, there's no reaction going to happen. That's why enzymes are so specific. So in your exam, always refer to this equation, the enzyme substrate complex. And note that the enzyme is unchanged at the end of the reaction. Just the products are formed and the enzyme is released. Forming the enzyme substrate complex is key to how an enzyme works and this is known as active site theory and there are two models, the first of which was the lock and key model which put forward that the active site is rigid and the substrate fits into that active site. It has a complementary shape, a bit like a lock and a key. However, this has been now replaced by the induced fit model which is the now accepted model and in this model the active site actually alters slightly to better fit the complementary substrate substrate, forming the enzyme substrate complex. The reaction proceeds and the product is formed. A bit like you sitting into a beanbag, how the beanbag changes shape to best fit around you or a comfy chair. Note that the enzyme is unchanged and available to bind with other substrate molecules after the reaction. Factors affecting enzyme activity. So what factors will interfere with how an enzyme works? Well, remember, enzyme shape is key to enzyme action. And if anything alters enzyme shape, it will alter active site shape. Therefore, the enzyme substrate complex cannot be formed and there's no reaction. In every chemical reaction, temperature plays a key consideration and the rate of reaction will generally increase when you increase the temperature until an optimum temperature is reached in the case of enzymes. Because if you increase the temperature above the optimum, well, then you're going to alter enzyme shape. The enzyme will become denatured and unable to catalyze. So the rate of reaction will drop. So when you increase the temperature or add heat, it increases the kinetic energy of the molecules, the reactants, the enzymes and the substrate molecules, and they just collide together more frequently, forming those enzyme substrate complexes. And this will continue until the optimum temperature is reached. And the optimum temperature is the temperature at which the enzyme is catalyzing at its fastest rate. And this graph is really important. pH is another factor that affects enzyme activity and enzymes have a very low tolerance to changes in pH. They work within a very narrow range. And in fact, most enzymes will work best at a specific pH. This is its optimum. It will catalyze at its fastest rate at the optimum pH. And if you alter the pH, you alter the enzyme shape. So the active site shape too. This results in denaturation and the enzyme cannot function and the rate of reaction will drop. So note the difference between the pH graph and the temperature graph. There are important practicals associated with the topic of enzymes. The first is to investigate the effect of pH on the rate of catalase activity and that pH graph appears in this practical. The next one is to investigate the effect of temperature on the rate of catalase activity and that too has the temperature graph so it's important to study those. There's also the practical to prepare an enzyme immobilization and examine its application and examining its application is very poorly answered so focus on that when you're revising. 
So don't forget there are videos on bugbears focusing on the practicals and you have a textbook. When you study enzymes, you encounter bioprocessing, which is the use of cells or their components, so enzymes to make useful products. And it's a huge growth industry in Ireland. You might even end up studying it. So it's used to produce food products and also pharmaceutical products. So bioprocessing in this regard is using enzymes to create food products or pharmaceutical products. And bioprocessing takes place in this type of vessel. It's known as a bioreactor. So a bioreactor is a vessel in which bioprocessing takes place. So when you're thinking about placing enzymes in a bioreactor, they're usually immobilized enzymes that are used. And immobilized enzymes means that the enzymes are fixed to an inert material or they're trapped in a gel. Using immobilized enzymes gives certain benefits, the first of which is that it stabilizes the enzyme. Secondly, the enzymes can be reused. And thirdly, you have a pure product. You don't have to do a separate separation technique to remove the enzymes because they're immobilized. They're not in the product. So when you fully studied enzymes, go on and study ATP and NAD plus, NADP plus. There are separate videos on bugbears on these two topics and you have your textbook. It's really worth your while focusing on these now because you need them for photosynthesis and respiration. So the very best of luck with all of the revision, little and often is the key.